I'm making this very tiny but powerful computer so I can produce some subpar music to go along with these YouTube videos. I was using this laptop with a dock, but I ran into some issues when I was trying to upgrade my monitor, which then turned into having to change just about every component on my desktop, but I'll get into that later. So welcome to the channel. This is the first video, but hopefully not the last, and I have a lot to show you, so let's go. Here are the specs of the system and I should see a bump in performance, at least a little bit, from the laptop's 4940MX to the 7700K. It's not the latest or greatest system components, but it is more than adequate for what I'll be using the computer for, which is just producing some music and you don't need a ton of CPU horsepower for that. And I'm not gaming, although you could play some games on a 1050 with 4 gigs. I had these base components sitting around for a very long time because I bought them on Craigslist when it was just a price that was too good to be true, so I jumped on it, but then I didn't end up using this computer for a while. I cannot stand loud computers, so here I am checking to see if this new to me power supply is louder than the CPU cooler, and if it is, which it is, then I have to swap it out for something quieter like a Noctua fan. I think it's funny that I'm building a desktop to replace my desktop replacement laptop. The laptop I was using before was working very well. It's a Lenovo Workstation ThinkPad W541. And that has more than enough power to, you know, make some music. But I had an issue with either the laptop or the dock or this monitor I was trying to use it with. This all started because I wanted to upgrade the monitor so that I could have a higher resolution so I could see more of the digital audio workstation. This monitor only had one DVI port and no other ports, which posed a problem. After far too much troubleshooting, I finally narrowed it down that for whatever reason, this particular monitor did not want to work with this dock or even this computer and I tried all kinds of different combinations and adapters and it just it just wouldn't work. So I thought the easier thing to do is just build a new desktop computer because I already had some parts laying around and here's a perfect excuse to make a new computer. I'm butchering this power supply right now because I'm going to be painting it to match the rest of the case that I had previously painted quite a while ago. I should have just left these stickers on and painted over them because trying to remove them all was very annoying and tedious as you can see. The fan that comes with this power supply is 80 by 15 millimeters and the fan that I want to put in there is 80 by 25 millimeters so it won't actually fit inside the case so I'm going to be mounting the fan on the outside of the case. To make that install just a little bit easier on myself and if I ever need to replace the fan later, I'm putting a connector on the power supply and making it shorter so I don't have a ton of wires inside of the power supply. I already had a power supply that was paint matched and fan modded. That's actually the same fan that I was using before, but I accidentally killed that power supply. It was very stupid. I unscrewed one of the motherboard standoffs screws and dropped it into the power supply. I thought that I had got it because I shook it and nothing came out and so I was like well I shook it hard enough to where if something was in there it would have come out and it didn't. So when I turned it on to test it before I made this build out went all the magic smoke and yeah it was dead. Another benefit of painting your own components is that you can buy used components like I did and if they have some scuffs or scrapes you can just paint over it and make it look new again or at least newer or better and you can then personalize it so you're the only one that has a power supply that looks like that. I have just a little bit more soldering to go and then I'll get into some painting.
Painting the CPU cooler was super easy. I wanted to go with just a very simple color scheme so that I could use this heatsink on a bunch of other different systems and not have it look too terrible. So I'm just going with a solid black. Most likely I will be changing out this CPU cooler for a different design that is maybe a little more aesthetically pleasing for the rest of the build, but I just needed something right now and I didn't want it to be silver and that's why I'm painting it right now. But most likely this will go in a different system and then I'll get a different CPU cooler and put it in this system. Removing your masking tape after painting is always one of the most satisfying feelings. Now on to prepping the power supply. Before, I would just always want to paint everything all black. Just all black all the time. Everything needs to be spray painted black. Just no matter what it was, spray painted black and it's going to look cooler and be cooler. After painting everything black all the time, I started to try some different things and growing up one of my favorite artists was Jacob Bannon. His style is very dynamic and filled with anger and fury and chaos and all these particles and splatters and, and in the midst of all this chaos there's interwoven with layers of elegance and cohesion and balance and things that just look very beautiful and I found that juxtaposition to be very interesting. There's something powerful in that chaos and destruction that to me is liberating creatively. When I was young I was completely obsessed with perfection and flawlessness like the only things of value were things that were completely perfect and did not have any flaws whatsoever. Growing up and attempting to maintain this perspective of needing everything to be flawless and perfect was a recipe for making, pretty much ensuring that you were going to have a very miserable life. Later in life, I found myself becoming more and more drawn to this cyberpunk aesthetic where the emphasis was kind of more on things being real and gritty and dark and ultimately things just being imperfect. This turned into a key that I was kind of able to mentally unlock and liberate myself from this overbearing and suffocating view of perfection and everything needing to be flawless. I was surprised at looking at things that I used to look at and think were ugly or flawed or not perfect and I started noticing that the things that actually made them seem more perfect in my eyes were the fact that they had flaws and they had characteristics about them that were unique to them which to me when things are perfect they're usually like uniform and it was kind of like these disruptions that made things actually more beautiful in my eyes extreme levels of order and perfection to the point of counterproductiveness and inefficiency and the laws of diminishing return is still something that I struggle with even to this day but I've definitely come a very long way in embracing different ways of looking at the world. I know I went completely off on a tangent and that was very imperfect of me but here I am exercising my philosophy. And if perfection is something that you also struggle with then I highly recommend attempting to extricate yourself from that paradigm. This is a subject that I've definitely given a lot of thought to so maybe I'll make a dedicated video to that in the future. I know, what does this have to do with computers and what does this have to do with painting a power supply? That's kind of what drew me to computers in the first place is you had this synthetic reality that was detached from all of the 
things I didn't like about this reality where everything could be perfect all the time and perfectly reconstructed and copied and everything was always in its place and perfectly ordered. But I also learned later that although computers seem like they're very perfect on their outputs, the way that they work both software and hardware and their inputs are very noisy, very chaotic, very random, and very real. Okay, tangent over. The moral of the story is do not be afraid to make ugly things. Instead of just painting everything all black, I've been experimenting with this kind of camouflage hexagonal pattern. I completed another project where I did a variation of this same pattern, so I'll be going over more in depth in that video. With all the parts all finally painted up and finished, it is now ready for assembly. This was taking me so long that I actually upgraded my desk and the lighting setup, so you can check that upgrade out in the next video. And I'm done. I think it came out pretty cool. I'm happy with it. You might think it looks terrible and ugly and what in the world is that? What is going on here? But I think it looks cool. I'm happy with it. And the good part is you can have a gigantic heatsink on a tiny little footprint. So I have this hanging off my desk because it's only taking up a very small amount, but I still have more than adequate cooling for all the stuff that I want to do with it.
In a stunning changeup, I actually didn't even use that crossover monitor because this monitor is even bigger and I had it in my office, so I moved that to here and I wanted a bigger monitor. So what's funny is that this monitor actually works with my old laptop. So I didn't even need to build a desktop, but I did it anyway and I had fun doing it and I'm glad I did it because those parts were kind of just sitting there anyway and now that frees up my laptop to take around and use it portably. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I appreciate you sticking around all the way to the end. You're a living legend. This is my very first YouTube video and I had a lot of fun doing it, although it was much more difficult than I ever anticipated, but it was a lot of fun. I'll show you how I made this overhead camera mount with LED lighting. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.